The eShop is ever-evolving and becoming more and more of a mess to try to navigate. So much so that you might have noticed that I've made this video already. But a lot's changed in the past six months, and I want to do things a little bit differently anyway. We're not going to include any of the games from the last video. I'm going to give you even more of the best games for under $15, under $10, and even $5, so you can get the most bang for your buck. Bucko. <laughs> We're going to start from the top and work our way down. So we're going to start with the $20. You, I, I did it again. I forgot to shave all of this. I've been looking like absolute garbage these last few videos. You know what? Hold on a second. Don't go anywhere. You know, we all have our everyday grooming routines. Look, I know you're lazy, but come on. The least you can do is shower and shave this little nonsense right here every once in a while. I bet you didn't know that Dollar Shave Club, yes, that Dollar Shave Club, has all of your grooming products. Toothpaste. Toothpaste? Yeah, toothpaste. Body wash, hair styling products, everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. Not just razors. Which is good because while I do keep this stuff trim, I probably don't shave it as often as I should. Check it out. Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their Daily Essentials starter set to new members for only $5. This starter set features three trial size versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean along with their executive razor. Which is great because I've been using that free razor that some people get sent to them when they turn 18 and I am very not 18 anymore, so it's time for an upgrade. In your box, you get the shave butter, body wash, and one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. Those are for your asshole. You will also receive their executive razor, which includes their premium weighty handle and full cassette of cartridges. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. This $5 offer is available at dollarshaveclub.com slash wolf and spell it correctly. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash W-U-L-F-F. All right, I think we're good. Anyway, to make this video, I had to make a big, huge list of Switch games categorized by price and Metacritic score. And if you want to see that entire list, you can just pause the screen right here. Obviously, those are a lot of games. My original plan was to redo the last video, but a lot of those games still reign supreme, and I probably riddled off a little bit more games than I should have. So instead, we're just going to add to it. If you want to see even more cheap games then after this video, Go watch that video. Also, there are way too many $20 games. We could probably make a whole video just on that. And since last time y'all shit on me for not including certain games, even though I already told you that they were above the price threshold, I'm gonna riddle off some games that I'm not gonna include because they're $20. Celeste, SteamWorld Heist, and Dig 2, Axiom Verge, Rocket League, Sonic Mania, and Fury. And because I have to shoehorn this in every chance I get, uh, I saw Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack for $20 once at a GameStop. So that counts. But this isn't about $20 games. This is about $15 and under. Hey, now we can start the video. Uh, there'll be Amazon links to all these games in the description below or the ones that I can include because a lot of these games aren't on Amazon But hey, you can use one of those links to buy yourself an eShop card to help support the channel, huh? I'm gonna move over here so you can see enter the gungeon, which is a cute little twin stick shooter. That's not around It's a brutally hard roguelike so you'll never play the same map twice It leans pretty heavily on its vast item selection and colorful cast of characters it also has two-player local co-op. You're gonna wanna play with someone who knows exactly what they're doing or else there'll be a whole lot of yelling. Enter the Gungeon is $15 and has a Metacritic score of 87, which happens to be the highest on this list. And that's why it's first, we're doing price and Metacritic score. That's the hierarchy we're doing here. Super Meat Boy is exactly the type of game that I like playing on the Switch. It's a 2D platformer that's known for being brutally hard, but I honestly don't think it is. You just die a lot. The levels are small, so it's fine. It's an oldie by now, but now we have it on the Switch. If you've ever seen Indie Game the movie, this is one of those games from that. I'd recommend checking this out before its successor, Super Meat Boy Forever, comes out later this year. Super Meat Boy is just $15 and has a Metacritic score of 84. 
In a similar vein, The End Is Nigh is also a difficult 2D platformer made by the same guys, Edmund McMillan and Tyler Glyle. It was released late last year, so if you want a fresher experience, this would be it. The only difference here being that the levels are all connected, so it feels more similar to a Metroidvania. But it still has that contained Super Meat Boy feel to each level. This game is also $15 and has a Metacritic score of 80. We need to push away from 2D platformers for a second, because there's a lot on this list, and we gotta space them out. Blossom Tales, The Sleeping King, is just 2D Zelda. You control Lily, Knight of the Rose, as you do basically exactly what Link did in A Link to the Past. But hey, the art style's really cool. If you're a fan of Zelda, I'm sure you'll love it. It's $15 and has a Metacritic score of 80. Right back to platformers, we've got Lightfall, which you might remember from one of the Nindy showcases earlier this year. I also got to play it at PAX, and I played it on Sunday's live stream, which I'll link to in a card right over here, here. Please no patch. Please no patch. Go! <laughs> oh! yeah! Yeah! I think it's very similar to Celeste, but instead of a dash or double jump mechanic, you get this cube that spawns underneath you. You can use it up to four times per jump before it locks up. It resets when you touch the ground. I was a big fan of Celeste, so I'm a big fan of this. It's significantly shorter, but it's also a little bit cheaper at $15. It just came out and not enough people reviewed it yet, so it doesn't have a Metacritic score. But if I were Metacritic, I'd give it an 85. Wait, Meat Boy only has an 84, so I'd give it a solid 82. It's right up there with the rest of them. Flint Hook is a roguelike platformer. You're a space pirate plundering other space pirate ships, and you spend your time trying to find the boss in each procedurally generated ship. The main mechanic here is the hook, if you haven't already noticed. So kind of like Bionic Commando, but really not at all like Bionic Commando. I'm a big fan of the visuals here. The colors and the sprite work are fantastic. Flint Hook is $15, but has a Metacritic score of 77, which isn't the best. Finally, the $10 and under games. VVVVVV is, say it with me now, a 2D platformer. What do you want from me? These are the type of games that I like. And when you're on a budget, these are the type of games that you get. Come on now. It's another brutally hard one. You might recall the Game Grumps infamous playthrough some time ago. Oh my god, I must save them. After I do this. <laughs> ah! Oh. Oh! Ah! So this isn't exactly for the casual platforming player. I would get any of the other platformers before jumping over to this one. But it's only $10, so that might be a selling point for some of you. And it has a Metacritic score of 80. Super One More Jump is, okay, now this one's not my fault. Blame Nintendo for having so many dang good platformers on their console that are so cheap. It's what I'd consider to be an endless platformer because you only control the jumps. You know, like an endless runner. It sounds like it would make a great mobile game because all you have to do is press one button so you could just tap the screen. It's only on the Switch. What, are they crazy? It's also got two to four player co-op. It's only $7. See, we're getting lower now and it has a Metacritic score of 73. Mom Hid My Game is a weird one. You play a kid trying to get his DS back that his mom hid. You'll go through a series of different scenarios to try to get it back, and they just get weirder and weirder. It reminds me a lot of WarioWare, but I guess it's more puzzly than that. Anyway, it's only five bucks, and has a Metacritic score of 73. Toki Tori is less of a platformer and more of a puzzle game. The Switch version is an enhanced remake of the 2001 Game Boy Color game. It looks the way that it does because this remake was originally created for the Wii. The reason we're talking about this now is because it's just $5, but it has a surprisingly good Metacritic score of 82. So if you like kid-friendly 2D puzzle games, this might be worth a look. There's also the newer Toki Tori 2, which looks a bit more modern, but that's $15 and has a Metacritic score of 84. That's so high. Why is that so high? Do we have time for a bonus game? game? Pinball FX3 is completely free. It's just a pinball game. It comes with a couple of free tables 
but any of the cool tables like the Portal table or the Walking Dead table are gonna cost you. It ain't no Fortnite, but hey, a free game's a free game. Pick it up in the eShop, just be careful of those in-app purchases. Table packs range from like $3 to like 20 bucks. So that's it. Those are some more cheap games that you can get for your Switch. But what do you guys think about all these cheap games? Did I leave any out? You can leave them in the comments below, at me on Twitter, or any of this other social media garbage. Like I said before, I streamed Lightfall here on YouTube earlier this week. I'm gonna also stream it on twitch.tv slash wolfden tonight when this video goes live. Also, I'm very close to the ending, so that's gonna be a very short stream. I'll play something else after that. I've been moderately playing Mario 64 every once in a while. Either that or maybe I'll do The End Is Nigh or one of the games on this list. Let me know what you wanna see. And if you can't make it to a Tuesday live stream on Twitch, here's our full schedule right here because we're here, we, we got things going on like every day. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. As always, the most important things that you can do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who has a Switch and you want to get them to play some more games because all they have to do is spend a couple bucks. They don't got to spend $60 in every game. Don't forget about those links down below. Get yourself a little eShop card before you buy one of these. Thank you guys very much. You have yourselves a very good week.